Welcome to the MOOC's course Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Rubber Industry. In this particular chapter, we will be discussing about a few introductory basic concepts of rubber industries and then few important uh, rubber synthetic rubbers that are manufactured industrially. That is what we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. Okay? Then we, we are also going to discuss about the uh, polymeric oils which are mostly silicon based. So, production of polymeric oils also we are going to discuss in this particular chapter. So, first we have introduction about a rubber industry or rubbers. Rubber can be natural or synthetic rubber. Synthetic rubbers which are counted under the polymeric elastomers category. If you remember uh, in the previous chapter on uh, polymerization, Polymerization processes when we were discussing processes associated with the plastics where uh, you know addition and then uh, condensation, polycondensation kind of methods we uh, you know uh, discussed to uh, produce ethnic polymers and then uh, phenyl formaldehydrogens kind of things we have discussed. The second category uh, was uh, rubbers under which most of the elastomer or elastomeric polymerization processes comes into the picture. Then third one is the uh, polymeric oils and then fourth one is the fibers. So, so here uh, what we are uh, doing is that we are discussing about this uh, uh, rubbers, elastomers and then polymeric oils production. The previous lecture or previous chapter we discussed you know mostly polymer processes associated with the plastics production. So, other way what I mean to say that whatever the rubbers especially synthetic rubbers that we are going to discuss and then production of polymer coils that we are going to discuss, they can be taken as subset of a polymer industry. However, from the applications point of view, these applications are specific towards the rubber or elastomeric materials. That is the reason we are separately discussing the rubbers as a separate chapter. Okay? So, these rubbers uh, naturally also available as we know. Most of the plants, you know, when, uh, when you uh, shred off some of the bark, etc., you can see some kind of uh, uh, rubbery material uh, is coming that is natural rubber and then there are specific plants are there which are you know uh, cultivated and then uh, grown in order to produce you know natural rubbers. Most of the Indian uh, rubber requirements are fulfilled by the natural rubbers only almost like 70 percent 65 to 70 percent of uh, rubber needs of India are filled by the natural rubbers. That means natural rubbers are being used mostly in India almost 70 percent it is being used and then natural rubber industry of India is indigenous. Right? However, some, uh, some of the requirements are also fulfilled by the synthetic rubbers. So, those uh, things associated with the synthetic rubber we are going to discuss in this particular lecture and then coming lecture of the particular chapter. Synthetic rubber production may be grouped under elastomer polymerization process. So, under the polymerization processes, elastomer uh, polymerization process is one of the uh, one of the subcategory or elastomeric polymers may be taken as subtype of a, you know one of the polymers. Right? So, polymers uh, whatever the uh, elastomer polymerization processes are there, they are used to produce synthetic rubber. What do you mean by elastomer? By the uh, word elastomer indicate like it is having some kind of elastic property. So, that is elastomer is an elastic polymer which returns to original dimensions when stretched considerably from its original shape. So, that is the definition of elastomer in general. You know elastomer is what mean by when you apply the external force it uh, undergoes some kind of stretching or elongation kind of thing, but when you remove the force that material will get back to its initial position. If it is completely coming back to its initial position or shape then it is known as the perfect elastic material. Okay? So, likewise elastic polymers are also defined. Okay? So, elastic polymers are nothing but the materials which returns to original dimensions when stretched considerably from its original shape. So, elastomer is under the broad classification of uh, rubber group as we just see from these points. 
Definition of true rubber, so then it is very important to define rubber, especially true rubber means what? True rubber means it must elongate at least how much? 200 percent it must elongate, at least 200 percent it must elongate and return to its original dimensions rapidly and forcibly. Then only we can call that particular material as a true rubber. So, or fully rubber or elastic material. If it is not coming back to its original dimensions rapidly and forcibly, then we cannot say that it is a true rubber. It is partial rubber. It may be counted as a partial rubber, but cannot be considered as a true rubber or fully rubbery material. Where a rapid retraction is not needed, elastic polymer formulations often outperform the rubbers, natural rubbers. Such materials are derived from vinyl polymers and then vinyl copolymers or polystyrenes and then acrylates as well. Okay? So, now we talk about rubber polymers. Natural rubber still supplies about 65 percent of needs in uh, rubber products industry in India out of which 70 percent is indigenous. Whatever the needs of uh, India are there, rubber products need of India whatever is there out of which 65 percent is fulfilled by natural rubbers and then out of such natural rubbers 70 percent we are producing indigenous without depending on the uh, you know outside external uh, foreign resources or technology. Okay? So, however, in the USA the picture is opposite where 30 percent is only uh, supplied uh, by the uh, natural rubbers in USA whereas the rest everything is by synthetic rubber polymers such as butadiene, styrene copolymers. Right? So, the synthetic uh, uh, rubber whatever the SBR or butadiene, styrene copolymers are there, they were developed during World War II. And then since then most of the rubber requirements of USA are fulfilled by this synthetic rubber and uh, other kind of uh, recent developments of the rubbers whereas only 30 percent is being fulfilled by the natural rubbers. Okay? Nowadays a number of types of rubber polymers exist. So, because of uh, such wide number of uh, polymer rubbers are existing. American Society for Testing and Materials that is ASTM classification has been given uh, letter abbreviations to such number of rubber polymers. Okay? Thus, a summary of structural formulae and raw materials along with the trade names of such rubbers are provided in the table because they are very much essential because technical terminology consumer may not uh, understand. So, because of such reasons uh, many of the products are given you know trade names as well. So, same is true for the you know uh, rubber products as well. So, some of the uh, rubber products along with their ASTM abbreviation trade name and then uh, monomer or repeating units whatever is there that structure we are going to discuss in a tabular column now. So, first column is on chemical name that is type of uh, monomer, second column is the ASTM abbreviation, third column is the trade name whereas the final column final column is polymer unit. Okay? So, here what we have let us say first one is polyisoprene, isoprene's production we have already discussed in one of the previous chapter. So, if you have the polyisoprene, it is a uh, uh, ASTM abbreviation is NR if it is natural one and then IR if it is synthetic one. Both the uh, abbreviations are given. So, trade names are natural as well as synthetic uh, uh, isoprene names are given. Polymer units is given like here like CH2, C, CH3, double bond CH, CH2. This is the repeating unit that is being repeated in isoprene. Another one is the ethylene propylene copolymer. ASTM abbreviations are EPR, EPT, trade name is ter polymer and then repeating units in the polymer, this polymer is CH2, CH2, CH, CH3, CH2. Okay? Then uh, polybutadiene, butadiene production also we have discussed in uh, one of the previous chapter. So, if you do the pol uh, polymerization of that butadiene, whatever the uh, polymer you get that is polybutadiene. So, ASTM abbreviation is BR, 
uh, trade name is cis 4 butadiene arbuno. It is a repeating unit in the polymer is CH2, CH double bond CH, CH2, right. Then another one is the butadiene styrene copolymer. So, since two different types of monomers are there, so it is a copolymer. It is the uh, one of the most important uh, development of uh, polymer industry or rubber industry, okay. Its ASTM abbreviation is SBR, S stands for styrene, B stands for butadiene, R for rubber, SBR. Trade name are uh, GRS and BUNA S. Repeating units, two units are there because two monomers are there, it is a copolymer. So, one unit is CH2, CH double bond CH, CH2 like uh, butadiene, another one is the CH2, CH, C6H5 that is for the styrene. Now, here dotted things are there. So, now here this dotted things does not mean that this one monomer and then this is another monomer are up occurring you know uh, alternatively or it does not mean that you know so many of these uh, butadiene monomers are being coupling together uh, and then after that the styrene is joining the uh, polymer chain it is not like that it is depends on the you know weight ratio or it depends on the you know uh, ratio of the uh, butadiene and styrene that has been taken in the polymer and such things are true for any other copolymers as well. Then another thing is that whatever these double bonds are there, whichever polymer it is. So, these double bonds are you know uh, are kind of uh, you know sources to form the branching or you know cross linking or both as we have discussed in the uh, previous chapter. Uh, previous chapter on polymerization we have seen branched polymers, cross linked polymers and then mostly this branching or cross linking is occurring at double or triple bonds, okay. So, the same information is given here, the star indicates here for the ones which are having these dotted lines like this, they are not alternatively repeating units but vary according to ratio of monomers used in copolymerization because more than one monomer is there, it is a copolymer and then units containing double bonds are subject to chain branching or linking in general. Some other uh, polymers details are provided here. Let us say butadiene acrylonitrile copolymer if you have, ASTM abbreviation is NBR, trade name is nitrile rubber or BUNA N. Repeating unit of this particular polymer is given here that is CH2, CH double bond CH, CH2, CH2, CH, CN, okay. So, another one is the polychloroprene, ASTM abbreviation is CR, trade name is neoprene, its structure is CH2, C, CL double bond CH, CH2, okay. Isobutylene isoprene copolymer is the other one. Its ASTM abbreviation is IIR, trade name is butyl rubber, okay. Uh, here isobutylene and isoprene two monomers are there. So, here dotted dots are indicating you know these monomers are you know joining together to form you know uh, copolymer, okay. So, now uh, we have uh, polysulfite. Its trade name is thiocols. It is CH2, CH2, SS uh, structure it is having. Now, this here IIR is another important one that is used in the uh, tires and tubes. Usually, either SBR alone or in combination with IIR polymers are used for the production of most of the you know tires and tubes that are being used for a you know automobiles in general, okay. Even if they are using in combination, contribution of SBR is more compared to the contribution of IIR. Here also this dotted does not mean that they are up, uh, joining repeatingly, alternatively repeated units are being joined, it, is the, it does not mean like that, it depends on the ratio of monomers that has been taken to form the copolymer and also these double bonds are subject to cross linking, right or possibility of branching and cross linking may take place at these double bonds. If you see some more uh, uh, rubber uh, polymers, we have a chlorosulfonated polyethylene, trade name is hypalon, 
and then its uh, polymer unit is CH2, CH2, CH, C, Cl, CH2, CH2 and then another one is the CH, SO2, Cl. It is also uh, having two monomers, this is one monomer, this is another monomer. Okay? So, here there are no double bonds, but you know these uh, monomers are also not uh, necessarily be alternatively joining and that depends on the ratio of monomers that have been taken. And then polyurethane, this we have uh, seen in the previous lecture, it is a, uh, it is produced by the reaction between MDI or TDI and then diols, alcohols or polyols. So, polyhydroxy polyisocyanate polymers are nothing but these things, right. So, these polyurethanes are nothing but the foams that are obtained by the reaction between MDI, TDI or both of them and then reacting with some kind of alcohols, diols or polyols are used. So, whatever the product name is there, commercial chemical name is the polyhydroxy polyisocyanate polymers, okay. They are in general known as the polyurethane. Okay. So, trade name specifically it is not there, but mostly they are referred as foams. Okay. The repeating structure is given here CH double bond O, NH, R, NH, C double bond O, O, R prime, O like this. Okay. Then silicon or dimethyl siloxane which we are going to uh, discuss production in the next lecture. Its trade name is silicon, it is a oil, high temperature resistance oil, it is having so many applications. So, it is repeating units, one of them is shown here. So, like Si, CH3, CH3, O, Si, CH3, CH3, O, Si, CH3, CH3. So, now this Si, how it is being connected to the other monomers or other uh, uh, molecules depending on that one, the properties, final properties of this. Uh, of these silicon oils would be changing. Okay? Now, we see pertinent properties of rubber polymers. Actually quantitatively having some values about pertinent properties of rubbers is very difficult because the rubber polymers, we have seen so many types of rubber polymers are there, so many different types of monomers are there, uh, polymers are there, copolymers are there, different types of uh, co-monomers are there and then uh, their weight ratio or their uh, ratio of the uh, monomers, how much they have been taken. Based on that one, the property, final property is going to change. Let us say SBR, if you take how many moles of uh, uh, butadiene, how many moles of styrene you have taken accordingly, final SBR polymer that you are going to get, the property should change. So, definitely the properties of SBR are going to be very different from IIR or any BUNA or any GUNA S kind of uh, polymers that we have discussed. So, having quantitative values about the properties of rubber polymers is not possible. However, we are going to list the you know important properties that are to be taken care or considered while selecting the polymers based on your applications. So, what are those properties? We are going to list now here. First one is the tensile strength, second one is the hardness like that, tear resistance, resilience, flex failure, abrasion, repeated stress failure, permanent set, aging, ozone and oxygen reactivity, oil and solvent resistance, thermal resistance, chemical resistance, electrical resistance, all of them are very essential. In fact, uh, you know a few may be missing from the list. So, all of these properties you have to estimate for your uh, rubber that has been produced and then accordingly you have to choose the application or you have based on your application you have to select certain kind of monomers and then uh, co-monomers if required, their mole ratios etc. and then uh, working conditions all those things you have to see so that to get you know uh, desired properties in your final rubber. Such properties are dependent not only on original polymer molecular structure, but on additional processing as well. 
So, those properties are also dependent on the processing not the polymer reaction polymerization processes, but you know you know subsequent uh, compounding vulcanization uh, shaping or form formation etc. steps are there they are also playing vital role on such properties. So, what are those processes that we are going to see? These are the additional processes to get the final product. So, one most important thing that may be there for almost all uh, polymers is the compounding. Another one is the mixing, another one is the vulcanization and then forming or shape formation. Okay. So, what do you mean by compounding? Maybe sometimes the pure polymer whatever you produce is of no use or maybe less use. Then what you do? You add some kind of fillers and then uh, additives etc. to make the polymer more suitable for a given application. So, adding such kind of uh, foreign materials uh, in, is known as the compounding. So, addition of fillers, coloring agents, plasticizers, antioxidants, vulcanizing agents etc. whatever is there that process is known as the compounding. Some of them are maybe used uh, in some polymers, some of them are not at all required, some of the polymers all of them may be required that depends on the applications to application and then quantity how much it uh, of these fillers, agents etc. are required that also depends on application to application and then uh, one polymer to other polymer it will definitely change. Okay, because no two polymers may be very similar to each other. Then what do you mean by mixing? So, these fillers, coloring agents, plasticizers etc. that you are adding to the polymer so that to make uh, you know um, uh, suitable to have a better applications as per the required. So, that addition should be done homogeneously, properly it has to be done. So, for that purpose this mixing is done. So, mixing is homogeneous distribution of compounding ingredients into solid elastomeric polymers. This is very much essential otherwise adding these uh, you know here is not going to serve the purpose. They should be added such a way that homogeneous distribution of compounding ingredients into solid elastomeric polymers should be taking place. For that purpose this mixing is done and then it is done using roll mills. Using roll mills whatever are there or rubber mills are being used which are having two rolls same like you know roll mills, but you know they are made up of the rubbers right. So, they one of the two rolls running at the low slower speed so that giving kneading action and then when this kneading action is uh, uh, you know supplied or you know transmitted to the uh, components that are being mixed. So, then homogenization takes place. Then vulcanization is something like cross linking kind of thing or stabilization kind of thing is uh, referred to the vulcanization. So, optical cross linking processes that occurs at double bonds in polymer units uh, is known as the vulcanization. Often sulfur is common vulcanizing agent with some accelerators or catalyst those catalysts may be organic or inorganic in the nature. Okay. So, that are being a, uh, added. Sometimes even some monomers are also different monomers are also added for this purpose. Okay. Now, finally forming is nothing but production of final shapes by processes like molding, calendaring and then extrusion etc. So, many other processes may also be there depending on the final shape of the product that you are going to get. So, that is all. Uh, basic about the rubber industries, rubbers and then chemical structures, properties etc. those things we have seen and then additional processes required to get the final rubber as per the consumer application those things we have seen. Now, what we do? We discuss production of SBR polymer or SBR rubber. What do you mean by SBR? It is nothing but butadiene styrene copolymer. Okay? Individually butadiene production we have seen, individually styrene production we have seen in the previous chapter. Now, we take them together and try to do the copolymerization to get the you know so called rubber polymer which is having trade name SBR. Type of monomers used in the SBR obviously by the name they are nothing but butadiene and styrene copolymers or co-monomers. Its ASTM abbreviation is SBR, trade name is GRS and BUNA S. If you see the polymer unit, what you have? You have the butadiene unit and then styrene unit. They are being joined coupled together to form 
copolymer, right? So, these dots does not mean that they are occurring uh, alternatively like you know when all butadiene monomers are uh, polymerized then this styrene is being added, it is not like that. It is depends on the ratio of this butadiene and styrene at what mole ratio have been taken. That ratio again depends on the properties of the final rubber that you are producing. Okay. So, and then also this uh, double bond is uh, you know is a source to do the required branching and cross linking so that the high molecular weight SBR can be formed easily. Right. So, here the units whatever the uh, dots containing are not alternatively repeating units but vary according to ratio of monomers used in copolymerization. Units containing double bond are subject to chain branching or linking. Properties and uses if you see for the SBR, SBR is a general purpose rubber very often it is used for the tubes and tires manufacturing. It is widely used for tires either individually or as a high percentage blend with natural rubber. Actually natural rubber is the best one for most of the cases. Different types of natural rubbers you take and then you compare with the uh, similar synthetic rubbers. So, then obviously the properties of natural rubbers are superior in general in most of the cases. But SBR is one kind of synthetic uh, uh, rubber that its properties are superior to the uh, natural rubber except the three properties those three are nothing but the tensile strength, resistance and then heat build up under heavy loading except these, proper, these three properties if you compare all other properties. SBR is better than the natural uh, rubber, right? However, this uh, when you make tires, either you use individually SBR, or you do it, or you do blending with the natural rubber. Even when you do the uh, blending with the natural rubber, SBR percentage that you are going to take is very high. Such superior is this SBR in comparison with the natural rubbers. It is also used for mechanical goods and electrical insulation purposes. Now, we see the production of SBR. First we see few steps of process description, then we see the flow chart and then we see the remaining steps of the flow chart in the uh, description form. Butadiene and styrene are copolymerized by emulsion polymerization in about uh, 3 to 1 weight ratio. So, emulsion polymerization is taking place. Okay. Originally batch polymerization plants developed during World War II, but later plants were well integrated continuous uh, units were also developed. Usually what happened emulsion polymerization whatever the monomers uh, you take and then you take catalyst if at all required and then you uh, take some kind of solvents if at all required and then take it to a batch or continuous reactor provide the required temperature of polymerization and then duration of the polymerization so that the polymerization takes place. So, then whatever the polymer mixture is there that you take to the separation unit. So, separate out the uh, monomers and then take them for the recycle and then this wet polymers whatever would be there drying, shaping kind of things are you know done that is what in general done. Same is true here also almost all we see from the flow chart point of view. Right. So, mostly uh, the initial original process whatever developed for this SBR, you know I told this is uh, developed during the world war II and then any material that has been developed during the world wars uh, is having so much significance because those materials have been developed based uh, you know because of the dire uh, requirements very high requirements at that particular uh, critical times. Right. So, Penicillin is also one of the such kind of uh, you know product that has been developed as we have discussed in one of the previous chapter. Right? SBR is also one of the such kind of product which is developed during the world war. When it was developed basically it was developed in a batch process however now continuous processes are also there. Properties of SBR rubber can be modified by temperature of uh, polymerization. So, what does it mean by? So, then temperature is having a very uh, good effect. So, or maybe you know different temperatures you operate different uh, SBR uh, material of different properties you may be getting. Okay. So, you have hot rubber that can be prepared at 50 degree centigrade 
and then cold rubber that can be prepared at 5 degree centigrade by refrigeration techniques. However, the operating costs are slightly higher for the cold rubber, but the properties wise or the final product wise if you see the cold rubber is superior in quality than that of hot rubber. Okay? So, however, uh, in this case uh, reaction rate decreases with temperature, but development of improved catalyst for redox type are more than offset this decrement in the rate of reaction with the temperature, thus allowing successful commercialization of cold rubber process in the continuous mode. Okay? Flow chart if you see here, this is the flow chart for uh, production of SBR, both uh, cold and hot processes may be taken or uh, discussed here without any difficulty. So, whatever the monomers uh, butadiene and then styrene are there, they are mixed and th along with the steam they are taken to a caustic contactor or this mixture is contacted with the caustic 20 percent NaOH solution. What is the purpose? The purpose of this one is the purification, for the purification of the monomer. Because uh, sometimes impurities if, if at all they are present uh, uh, in the monomer, so then final polymerization may not take place or you know polymerization may be stopped in between. So, uh, you know having very pure monomer is very much essential from the uh, polymerization or continuation of polymerization point of view. Okay. So, then after purification these are sent to the search tank and then to the filter to separate out whatever the uh, solution, caustic solution etc. if at all they are and then after removing these caustic solutions etc. the mixture is taken to the homogenizer to which activator, soap, modifier uh, are added. These are nothing but compounding agents or compounding processes that we discussed for that purpose these are being added. And then they are uh, taken to homogenizer where mixing operation is taking place as we have seen a few slides before. So, the monomers and then these uh, compounding agents whatever are there activators, modifier, detergent soaps etc. they would be homogenized in the homogenizer by mixing. Then they will be passed through a refrigeration unit to reduce the temperature. Uh, to 5 degree centigrade or so if you are doing the cold process otherwise it is not required. right? So, since we are discussing cold process, so here we have the refrigeration where the temperature of the mixture reduced to 5 degree centigrade and then it passed through series of reaction, uh, reactors, 6 to 12 reactors are there in series in which the required conversion of the monomers will take place to get the copolymer SPR. Then the after uh, passing through all the reactors, whatever the uh, reaction mixture is there that is passed through blow down tank to separate out latex if at all it is there. right? So, then after separating the latex, the mixture is taken to a falling film stripper where butadiene is separated out from the top whatever the unreacted butadiene that is there in the mixture that is separated out from the top of the falling film stripper and then that is taken for the recycle. After removing the butadiene, the mixture is taken to perforated plate stripper where unreacted styrene is separated from the top and then taken to a recycle. Then whatever the emulsion polymer whatever is there that is taken to mixing chamber where anti-accidents etc. are added if they required and then there also carbon blocks etc. would also be added as per the requirement. So, these antioxidants, carbon blocks etc. are depending on the requirement they will be added and then the material is sent to the coagulation conversion to separate out the you know uh, so called you know you know latex etc. and then the mixture is uh, you know taken to a uh, vibrating shaker. shaking screen where you know crumbs of the polymer whatever are there they would be floating on the top of the screens and then collected sub, uh, further for the further processing whereas the uh, materials like you know uh, antioxidants or you know fillers etc or whatever the soluble materials etc are there they would be washed out from the crumbs by using the ionized water spray 
to this mixture. So, when you use the deionized water onto the vibrating uh, shaking screen, so soluble material should be separated out and then treated with H2SO4 as per the requirement. Okay. Whereas the crumbs whatever are there, they would be taken to a slurry tank and then another uh, you know, vibrating uh, shaking screen to remove if at all some many uh, more you know, uh, soluble compounds are there. After separating soluble compounds, the polymer crumbs whatever are there, they would be passed through vacuum filter to separate out the uh, undesired uh, liquid etc. Then send uh, dried in a continuous uh, rotary dryer to get the SBR rubber to welling operations. Okay? So, this is the process to produce the SBR by cold process, but if you wanted to do the hot process, the same flow chart uh, process may be followed, but without needing of this refrigerator. Okay? Now, uh, we uh, describe the remaining steps of the process. Process involves 20 percent aqueous caustic purification of the fresh plus a recycled monomers. This purification is followed by consecutive passes through 6 to 12 glass lined reactors or stainless steel reactors. Total residence time ranges from 5 to 15 hours, most of the polymerization processes are time consuming process that is the reason many people prefer to produce them in a batch mode if the low tonnage production is there. But however, SBR is a high tonnage production because of its market, so then the reactors are in general continuous though the process time is very high. And reactors are equipped with uh, uh, steam heating, water cooling and refrigeration provisions. Reactors can thus produce cold SBR at 5 degree centigrade and then 1 atmosphere gauge pressure or hot SBR at 50 degree centigrade and 3 to 4 atmospheric gauge pressures. Okay. Latex from reactor is collected in blow down tanks after stripping the polymerization with chemical inhibitors, then fed to a falling film stripper to remove butadiene and recycle it. Bottoms are passed to perforated plate column to strip out the styrene and then recycle it. Monomer free emulsion is pumped to blend tanks for addition of certain compounding in ingredients like uh, antioxidants, carbon blacks, etc. as we have shown. Others may also be added as per the requirement. Latex is coagulated to rubber crumbs which float onto shaker screens where wash water removes catalyst, emulsifier, other soluble compounds. Crumbs are dried with hot air in a continuous belt dryer, then pressed into bales for shipping to compounding and fabricating plants. References for today's lecture are presented here. Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden, edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar, 4th edition. Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Groggins, 5th edition. However, most of the lecture notes that is prepared and presented in today's lecture is prepared from this particular reference book that is Outlines of Chemical Technology by Dryden. Thank you. Mm -hmm.